Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of How'd They Do That? This week we catch up with Jason Wise. Jason is a sports and portrait photographer. Jason is mostly known for his work at Arizona State University photographing their sports department. Jason has been published in Sports Illustrated as well as Sports Illustrated Kids and many other magazines and publications. Well, we just caught up with Jason after he finished one of his shoots, so let's hear what Jason had to say. Well, we've caught up with Jason Wise, and Wise is in a very intelligent, wise guy. So tell us a little bit about the equipment that you use when you're shooting sports. We have some stuff here. Uh, start with this guy, what is that? Yes, this is a Canon's 400 2.8, and I like the- uh, Can two I pick it up? Yes, of course. And um, I like the 2.8 lens for the fact that you can get a workout, but um, <laughs> outside of getting the workout with it, um, it's great for low lighting situations, which we'll find at many colleges and universities throughout the country. And this guy, how long have you been using this lens? Uh, that particular lens I uh, purchased back in 1997 when I was hired by Allsport. Okay, so a long time. Yes. Yeah, this is one of those lenses that you buy and you keep it for life. Yes. So, um, and then this is a 70 to 200? Yes, um, also Canon 70 to 200. Uh, that is also a 2.8 lens and uh, much easier on the right. uh, arms. But uh, you know, one of their top notch quality lenses, I love the sharpness on that lens, even with a 1.4 converter. Right, and um, I've noticed you have no collar here. I thought it was a modified lens, but there's no collar. So uh, why no collar? Uh, I just think it's one more thing that can get in your way. And you know, I like the ability to be able to go from a horizontal to a vertical. So you don't, no monopod, nothing? Not more? with a 7200. Right. Um, is once you've shot with this guy. With the <laughs> okay, because I like I use my tripod all the time with that, and I think it's heavy. But I right. guess you know once you've done that. Uh, and then yeah. let's talk about your camera. So this is a 5D Mark II, which is not normally a sports camera. So no, but having the uh, benefit of being able to do sports portraits uh, okay. and doing corporate work, I love the 5D Mark II. Um, and then back to the workhorse for the sports field. Uh, Canon's 1D Mark II is uh, what's uh, right, and this has some well-worn parts to it, so it's been used and used and used, obviously yes. for years and years. Um, and that's, I think, some of the benefits of buying equipment like this. We get questions a lot of why would you spend that much money, and the answer I think is it's going to last you for a long, long time with no fail. And you actually have two of these 1D Mark IIs, is correct. That correct? So you have two different lenses, two different bodies. Uh, now, when you're shooting, let's say you're shooting with this guy on, at a football game. Um, are you doing that by yourself? Do you have help? How does that work? Um, at ASU, I bring an assistant to every game. And you know, it's someone who more so is going to go get fresh batteries, um, who can I can switch lenses with as mm -hmm. um, a, a team is driving closer to the end zone in the field, all of a sudden gets shorter and shorter. Right. Um, and then this lens, uh, last but not least, and this is a 24 to 105. Yes, and that's also uh, f4 lens, so I use that um, more so in uh, daylight or in situations where the light is better, or with the expanded ISO that is presented right. on the Canon's 5D Mark II. So talk to us a little bit about the lighting equipment that you do use. Um, I do use Alien Bs and White Lightnings. I think that um, the their durability and the range that you get out of the equipment is outstanding and right. I love the all the different modifiers like this light has on it on the seven inch reflector is barn doors and on this light we have also on the seven inch reflector a 20 degree grid spot which um, allows you to really play around with lighting and and change from a straightforward lit portrait to some lighting that's a little more dramatic and directional. Yeah. And we uh, were looking at your website earlier and saw that you have a lot of different variations in hard light and soft light and large groups and small groups. So talk about some of the light modifiers that you use. Obviously you have a standard reflector grids, barn doors. Are you using soft boxes or umbrellas? Or I do. I, I use uh, both of the aforementioned and I like to use um, and the soft lighting, you know, I, I definitely feel that the umbrellas and softbox, octabox, and a beauty dish are mm -hmm. good. 
and um, I didn't know if we had enough room, so I didn't bring everything <laughs> right, here. So have everything. And then the strip lights are uh, excellent. Um, right. You know, just to put on a couple of strip lights, and they can be used in a soft light situation and in a hard light situation, just depending on. And do you carry all of this stuff every shoot, or do you know in advance what you're going to be taking on a shoot? Uh, I know in advance before I would just take everything with me. Just haul it out there. Right. Right. Gotcha. Okay, so um, let's talk about a few of your images. First of all, I've noticed that on some of your shots that you're not afraid to drag the shutter. We've got uh, one of the football players on a bus, I think it is. Yes. Um, and you know, also Grant Hill, there's some shots where you, know, you can see that the slow shutter, but you've got a nice frozen action with your strobe. Um, talk to us a little bit about why you chose to do that. Uh, the picture with Adrian Peterson, yeah, he was actually still in college and on a trolley. And when I was uh, given permission to photograph on the trolley, I realized that it had just this beautiful natural wood look to it. So I said, I got I really want the light to just burn in. So to lower your shutter speed it is definitely a risk because you could risk motion blur. Right. And you know, but with a strong enough strobe, you know, uh, Adrian was lit with one light with a grid spot on it so the light would focus on him and then let the light fall off wherever it would but lower the shutter speed enough so it would balance pretty well that you could see what was around him. Well we also looked at some of the lighting that you did with athletes and it looks like you use a lot of uh, strong backlight to give those highlights you know some rim light on the athletes. Can you walk us through a little bit about how you do that um, uh, just a basic strategy? Sure you know my approach to that is to be able to go into uh, certain places, like um, there's a picture of uh, Jeff Pendergraph, who was the center at ASU, and we had a time set and permission to photograph him, and when Jeff came out, they still needed to use the basketball floor for something else. So instead of saying, hey, can we shut off the lights in the gym, you know, we just lit him and with strong, harsh lighting that would just create, um, one, the very edge outlined effect, but it would also have such a high f-stop that it would overpower and the rest of the Destroy gym would go the black. Light. Gotcha. And did you use your, your grids for that? How did you get that controlled light? There was. There was a combination of grid spots and barn doors and um, you know, it angled from the side and one light from the back. And uh, you know, it just helps to outline the athlete and create those you know, mm -hmm. cool edges. One of the things that I've seen you do, you shoot these guys that are working out and they're doing their uh, you know, training, I guess it's before the season starts, just getting all their endurance and wind mm -hmm. sprints and all that kind of stuff. Um, but you make it look like you're just very good friends with these athletes because they're you know, sweating and working and doing things that I think most people would say, get the camera away from me. How do you work with these athletes to gain their trust to allow you to get those shots? Well, I think you just, uh, you know, having played sports for uh, most of my life, you know, you just kind of relate to them on a level that they understand. You know, they're, um, they're uh, just guys that enjoy what they do tremendously. And I think to just uh, build that rapport where you can go out and just make it fun for them. I remember being at spring training one year and I uh, went up to Ken Griffey Jr. and um, Walter Yost of the sports photography world um, did that wonderful book with Ken Griffey and when I had a chance I said hey Ken can I ask you about the book and he said yeah he's like what do you want to know I go there's some like really behind the scenes pictures in there of you you know what did you know what, what did Walter say to just get you to agree to do a book like this and Ken said he goes I'm gonna make this more fun than you've ever had having your picture <laughs> taken and you know I think if you make it fun for him and you know they like to joke around and you know they like to see pictures of themselves right. and you know like it, you don't want to treat these guys as like you know they can walk on water because they can't yeah. I think you just get a feel after being around it for a while of what athletes are okay and and I've had the privilege to work with Mike Tyson we had an exclusive just him and I um, while he was training here in the valley many years ago and um, you know, even a personality like that, where I've you know photographed Mike as close as I am to you, but he um, <laughs> he you know just did his thing because he's a professional athlete concentrating on his job as well as I was concentrating on mine. That's awesome. Okay, well, thank you. We're out of time, unfortunately, but thank you. Lots of good stuff. So, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And uh, hopefully, we'll have you back again soon. That'd be great. Thank you. 
Well, thanks for joining us this week here at Adorama TV. I hope you enjoyed our interview with Jason Wise. Remember, if you have questions about photography-related gear or techniques, you can always visit the Adorama Learning Center. We have all kinds of articles and videos to help you out. Or if you have questions, you can send those directly to me at askmark at adorama.com. Well, thanks for joining me. I'll see you next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.